Okay, Christy, here is one of my incubators. I'm getting ready to set some quail eggs. I use the Farm Innovators. I absolutely love it. This is the forced air. You can see this here is the um, thermostat and this one's the hydrometer. This controls the fan. This is the fan. And then this one controls the heating elements. So I absolutely love this. This is my third one, fourth one. Um, and I will show you how it is. This is the Turner. I'm just testing it. Never, ever trust the um, temperature here. I'll, I'll show you it on here in a minute. But I always keep one of these handy dandy thingies with the humidity and temperature in my room so I can monitor it. That way if there's a spike, then I know right away and I can come and fix it. So here's the other thing. This is a tray to another one I'm getting ready to set up because I actually have too many eggs to go in one. I love it. This is an older one. Um, it has the metal screen. These are water chambers. Like I said, I dry hatch. I don't add water to it. So that doesn't make much of a difference. This one is one of the newer ones. And I absolutely love this design. It has a plastic screen, but you can see right here, <laughs> freaking mice chewed through it. So um, yeah, that pissed me off. So I don't know how well it's going to work for temperature. I've got to figure out how to close that off. But one thing that I like about this one is it does have two fill holes that have plugs, except the mice also ate one of the fill plugs, but that's what it looks like. Um, and then it has these little um, pedestals on the underneath that hold this in place. And I like this because uh, I feel like it's a, it's a little bit easier on their feet but it also has the chambers as you can see but if you do do a wet hatch it makes it a whole lot easier it's more evenly distributed and you don't have to open it up to fill it now what i do is um see these holes in the top those are vent plugs and so you put a little red plug in it let me see if i've got one handy you put these little red plugs in it if I feel the need to wet hatch, um, I will fill through there and I'll put a handy dandy sponge right di directly below it. And then I can top off the sponge right there. However, I dry hatch, like I said, and then I might, when it comes to lockdown, I might add some humidity then just to help them break out of their shell a little easier. And that's when I'll add the sponges. I just get cheap ones from the dollar store. I can cut them up and um, I use them a couple times, but then I throw them in the wash. When they start to disintegrate, then I get new ones. So see, there they are. That's 120 quail eggs on the quail rails. This is your typical chicken egg turner. Quail eggs will fit in the turner. You just can't hold as many. And there are 39 in there. So for me, where I live, I always leave one hole open and the other vent hole closed. That's just a water spot. So I'm going to do my mode. Press the button till it blinks. It's set at 99.5. I generally have to set it at 100.5. I'm going to set the days. to 17 because that's what it takes to hatch and then we just watch the humidity I don't worry about too much until hatch day that's what that is and you're all set right now it's going up to temperature we just keep an eye on it and here in my room this temperature here will be a recording of 
how high it gets, how low it gets, and the current temperature. And that'll start to rise as the incubator temperature rises. But it's right next to my bed, so I can keep an eye on it pretty easily. Another thing I have found very handy is this is for a heat mat for seedlings. This little probe I have stuck inside the hole um, like this before and plugged the incubator if I'm having trouble with the heating element because occasionally they go out, but this helps regulate it. So that goes in there and then I plug um, my incubator directly in there and plug this into the wall instead. So if this thermostat isn't working or reliable, then this is kind of like a backup. So it should automatically turn on and off on its own to keep temperature. This is a backup. You can set it, set your temperature for what you want. And yeah, it'll also be a backup and shut the whole thing down when it reaches temperature and if it gets too high and then turn it back on when it gets too low. So ask me any questions you, you want. Like I said, I have four of these. I run them pretty darn near full time and it gives me the opportunity to do one small hatch a week. I do have a big incubator in the garage. It's an industrial one. I've never used it because as soon as we got it, we started having attacks on our animals and I've never had enough eggs to justify firing it up when I have these four little ones. So, um, but hopefully soon I can do that and I'll bring you along on that journey too. I've been doing these for running these specific ones I think I got my first one in 2015, maybe. So they've improved a lot since then. And some people hate them. I love them. They work great for me. I've got a lot of fail safes just to do backups, but yeah, they work good for me. And I've learned how to replace the, the motors if they go out. So I've got lots of parts because those do go out quite often. And, um, yeah, the trays themselves are like 50 bucks each, if not more, and you can get a new motor for less than 20 usually.